part two of the tutorial deals with Pythagorean's theorem again as it pertains to, well, first of all, a rectangle. Here we have a rectangle and we have a diagonal drawn across from one corner to the other. And we're supposed to find the length of the diagonal or this piece right here. Well, if you look at a rectangle, we know that opposite sides will be equal. So if this is 4, this must be 4 as well. And this, this is 11, this must be 11 as well. But what we don't know is this part right here. But if you look at it carefully, and you outline it out, that diagonal has managed to form two congruent triangles going from this side to this side. So that's two perfectly congruent triangles. And if you also look at it, you notice it's formed right there, a right angle, because one of the corners here of this rectangle is a perfect right angle. So this is a right triangle. Now that it's a right triangle, we can use our theorem, Pythagorean's theorem. So let's put in the ones we know. Well, going straight across, the hypotenuse is right here. So this is C, but we don't know that yet. So we've still got an unknown C squared. Looking at this side here, let's call it A, and let's call this one B. It doesn't really matter which one you label A or B, it will still work out. So A is 4, so we'll put in 4, and then it's got to be squared. Then we'll put in B, which is 11, and we are going to end up having to square it as well. So, continuing to work it out, 4 squared, or 4 times 4, is 16. 11 squared, or 11 times 11, is 120. One. Now if we add these two up here on the side, 121 and 16, we end up with 137 as our answer on this side right here. The only thing we have left is we just want C by itself. So how do we get rid of a squared? On this side, we simply do the opposite. We take a square root of this. That will cancel out the square. But if we do it to one side of the equal sign, we must do it to the other side. So now we are left with C equals the root of 137 course, we have to use our calculator to figure that one out. So 137, and then we do the square root, and the answer is 11 decimal 7. Of course, we're only going to go one decimal place. So our final answer is 11 decimal 7, and don't forget it was in centimeters. So if we wanted to go back up here to the picture again, this part right here, the diagonal, is 11.7 centimeters. In this one, we're given something a little different. We're given a right angle, there's our symbol there, and we're not given either of the sides. We're not given C squared, so this right here is C, this side, and this right here we'll say is B, and we'll say this side is A. All we're told is that if you make four equal sides, or a square, you'll end up with the area of nine centimeters. If you take this one here and multiply this side times this side, because remember, the area of a square is the side squared. So whatever the side was, square it, and you get 16. So whatever, something times something, must give us 16. Well, if we use our formula here now, since we know this is A right here, so it's all the same, that's A, that's A, and that's A. 
if this is C, then this is C, this is C, and this is C. So let's put into our equation what we know. So this is C, but we don't know C, we know C squared, because we know one side times another side is 16 centimeters squared. So I'm going to put 16 centimeters squared underneath the C squared part. For this part here, A, we don't know what A is. We don't know what one side is. So we're going to leave it A squared. And for B, down here, we know that B squared will be 9 centimeters square. Now all we have left to do, we want to move this 9 centimeters squared over to this side so that it's only a squared on this side. And the way to get rid of plus 9 is to go minus 9. So if we take away 9 centimeters squared, that'll cancel out. And then we'll have to take away 9 centimeters squared. And now we're left with 7 centimeters squared on this side equals a squared. So the answer to this one over here is going to be 7 centimeters squared because a squared is one side times the other side, which is the area of this one. Another thing that might be asked is, given a triangle with these measurements, is it a right triangle? Well, if it's a right triangle, then you can use this theorem, Pythagorean's theorem again. And if it is a right triangle, just like a balanced scale, this side will equal this side when we put in these numbers. So let's put in these numbers and see what we get. But which one's c squared? Remember, as I said before, the hypotenuse will be the longest. So if this is the longest, this will be 9. And of course, we'll have to do squared. And if we look at a, well, we'll call this one a and this one b. So let's put in 5 squared. And then we'll put in 7 for b, 7 squared. So continuing to work it out. 9 times 9 is 81. 5 times 5 is 25. And 7 times 7 is 40. The only thing we have left to do is add this up and see if it will equal 81 centimeters. So 81 centimeters, add up 25 plus 49, and our answer is 74. So we'll put our equals 74 centimeters, and it does not equal the same. I'll put a nice symbol down there because it does not equal 74 centimeters. So it is not a right triangle. The reason being one side plus the other leg, or one leg plus the other leg squared, will not equal the hypotenuse squared in the formula. In word problems with Pythagorean's theorem, sometimes the hardest thing to realize is that the items they're giving you will make some sort of a triangle, a right triangle, hopefully. So let's look at the information we're given first. It says a man's painting a house with a ladder that is 13 feet long. He places the ladder so that it is 5 feet from the bottom of the house. How high up is the man? when he's at the top of the ladder. So to make this easier, you always draw a diagram. I'm going to draw the ground here. Then I'm going to draw a lovely little house. 
Let's we'll see what it turns out to be. Okay, so there's my lovely looking house with the roof. And now I'm going to draw my ladder going from here to here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could be like this, it could be like that. It might not look right when you're filling the numbers, but as long as you label them properly, it's fine. So here's the ladder, and you notice what kind of a triangle it formed if you look at where the ladder meets the house. Right down in the bottom, you can see it forms a perfect right angle. The ground and the house, and then the hypotenuse part is the ladder. So here's the C, the hypotenuse. This one here would be the B, if you'd like, and this one here would be the A. Now what do we know using Pythagorean's theorem? Well, let's bring them on down and start filling in what we know. Let's start with C squared. Do we know C or the length of the ladder? We said it was 13. That's how long the ladder is. So let's put in 13 squared will equal, do we know A, or the distance it is from the bottom of the house? It said that it's 5 feet from the bottom of the house. So the answer down at the bottom is 5, so we'll put in 5 for A. And the only thing we don't know is the height, or how far up the man is, or B squared. Now let's solve for what we know. 13 times 13. And the answer is 169. So I'll put 169. And then 5 times 5 is 25. And of course, we still have b squared. Whoops, b squared. So the only thing we got left to do, we want to get rid of this 25 here. So the only way to get rid of 25 is to, well, let's take it away. It's a plus 25, so let's take away 25. And that will be gone then. But if we do it to one side of the equation, we must do it to the other side. So we'd better take away 25. So 169, and let's take away 25. And the answer is 140. Four. So now this is what we're left with on this side. 144 equals, this was gone, remember, b squared. So I'm going to move this down a little bit just to make it a little easier to see. So this is what we are left with. 144 equals b squared. But we only want b by itself. So the way to get rid of a squared is to take the square root. But if we do it to this side, we must do it to this side as well. So now we're left with b on this side, and we got to find out what root 44 is. Going back to our calculator, we've got 144 already written out. Let's do the root of it, the square root of that, and the answer is 12. Let's put our answer in here for b is 12, and of course it is 12 feet. So now looking here, the question was how high up is the man when he's at the top of the ladder? We know that b now equals 12 feet. So the man is 12 feet high when he's at the top of the ladder.